H10 EMA this week, we looked at how materials oscillate on an atomic scale. We looked at the periodic table and how the electrical properties of these atoms can be used in the terms of semiconductors to form some useful materials, such as diodes. We also looked at how charges either attract or repel, and how to use Coulomb's law to calculate the forces between these charges. This series of videos is now going to help you with the seminar work. Complete the homework and ask if you have any problems. These resources are there as an aid to your own learning to watch at your own time. A semiconductor is a material with an electrical conductivity between that of a conductor and an insulator. Silicon and germanium are semiconductors which are used extensively in electronic devices. So here's a picture of what some germanium looks like in its metal form, and here's our atomic diagram. The symbol in the middle GE is the symbol in the periodic table, and that's the nucleus of our atom, and each of the dots circling it are electrons. In semiconductors, the atoms are arranged in a lattice structure. So we're going to add some extra germanium, and here's our lattice. The important thing with semiconductors is that the four outermost electrons of the atoms are shared with the nearest four atoms. So let's have a look and see what that means. We can see here are our outer electrons, and these are going to be shared. This means that overall, the material is balanced. We can alter the electrical properties of semiconductors by adding other materials into the lattice with the silicon or the germanium, and this process is known as doping. We can dope materials to be either n-type semiconductors or p-type semiconductors. What does this mean? Well, let's look at n-type semiconductor. We've got our four germanium atoms as before. We're going to remove one of those and replace it with another material. In this example, I'm going to use phosphorus. With p-type semiconductors, we're going to make it a positive type semiconductor. So what we do is we remove that germanium and we replace it with something else. In this example, I've used boron. In an n-type semiconductor, we take our germanium lattice and remove one and replace it with something else. I've chosen phosphorus. The reason for this is because instead of having four outermost electrons, phosphorus has five. This means that overall the material is now more negative because there's that extra electron. The extra electron, which is called a free electron, can move more easily through the crystal lattice so electricity can pass through the material. Remember that electricity is the movement of electrons through a material. The greater the number of impurity atoms, the greater the number of free electrons per unit volume, the greater the conductivity. This essentially means that if we add more of a dopant material, the material will conduct more electricity. So here's that material a little bit more zoomed out. You can see I've got my nuclei, which are overall a bit more positive, and then I've got my free electrons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put two electrodes across the block of material and then apply a potential, which I've made a battery. This means that one electrode is going to be positive and one electrode is going to be negative. Because the electrons are negatively charged, they'll move towards the positive electrode, which we can see here. And this allows charge to pass through the material. P-type semiconductors work in an opposite way. You'll see what this means in a moment. So this time, here's my germanium atoms with my electrons. And what I'm going to do is remove one germanium and replace it with something else. In this case, I've chosen boron. Boron only has three electrons in the outer shell. What does this mean? The material is now more positive. The extra lack of electron, which is called a hole, looks and acts like a positive charge and can move more easily through the crystal lattice so electricity can pass through the material. As before, the greater the number of impurity atoms, the greater the number of holes per unit volume and the greater the conductivity. Sometimes people find it difficult to get clear in their head what a hole is. Essentially, it's an imaginary positive charge which is caused by the lack of an electron. So here's my material, and this time here I've got my ions, and they're now negatively charged because the material is now more positive overall. And you can see below them, this time instead of electrons, I've got holes, and I've indicated that by an empty circle instead of a filled circle. But zooming out, we're going to look at the material as a whole. And what we're going to do is I'm going to apply an electrode across each end, 
and a potential in the form of a battery. This means one end will be positive and one end will be negative. This time, because the holes are positively charged, they're going to move towards the negative terminal. And this is how current moves through a p-type semiconductor. Diodes are all two terminal components, which mean they have two legs which we can connect to in a circuit. They only allow current to flow through them in one direction. This means you have to connect them in a circuit the right way around or they won't work. So here's some diode symbols like we've seen before. The top is an ordinary diode, the middle one is a light emitting diode or an LED, and the bottom one is a photodiode. We'll talk about what those arrows mean in a moment. But first up, let's apply a current across our diode. So what we're going to do, here's our current. We're going to go from positive through to negative. And you can see that there. What you should be able to see is that the arrow on the diode symbol points in the direction that the current is allowed to flow. This is true for any of our diodes. Here's an image of some diodes so you can see what they look like. You can see the two legs you can connect to and you can see a stripe on each of them to show which end is which. Our light emitting diodes you'll have seen a lot in modern electronics and they come in many colours and many different sizes. On the symbol in the circuit the arrows pointing outwards indicate that light is emitted from this component. The bottom one is a photodiode. This time the arrows pointing inwards on the circuit schematic indicate that light is going in and is detected by the component. You will have seen photodiodes in everyday life. Your phone camera will have a photodiode to detect the level of ambient light so your camera knows to compensate for this. 